All right, so next we're working on the ladder. This is, as you can read, I'm sure, I hope, <laughs> a universal ladder. It's an aluminum ladder. I was searching high and low for a ladder. I searched for hours, maybe even days. I'm just not really happy with what's on the market. And it might just be my price point, but I just wasn't finding a lot. Zuka, quit your snooping. Good girl. Can you wave? Come on, give me a big wave. Yeah, good girl. All right, that deserves a treat, right? Oh my gosh. Milo, go get it. Good boy. Ready? Here you go, Sooks. There you go. <laughs> hey, Milo, can you wave? Oh. Milo, wave. <laughs> Milo, come on. Okay, sit. Shake my hand. Good boy. Other side. Good boy. Good girl, Suka. Now wave. That's about as good as it gets for you, isn't it? Good boy. Oh my God. Right off her nose. This is ridiculous. They should not be getting this many treats. Where was I? These are designed for your typical camper. It's about a 12 inch width, I believe. They're pretty narrow. Studs in a trailer, I think they're typically gonna be about 16 on center. So that means you got to do some sort of extra framing or bracing in there. And that's annoying. In my case, it has to go on the side. You're just left with this kind of an eyesore and this extra drag hanging off on the side. And I don't like chrome. I wish there were more options in black. I do think I came across a couple options in black, but they were a lot more expensive for a coat of paint. But anyway, I bought this ladder. The price was right. It's about $160 on Amazon Prime. If you keep your eye out, you can find sometimes used ones. So I did get a used like new and it said package would be damaged. Obviously it's a little rough, but what that tells me is that somebody ordered it, they didn't install it and they just returned it. We're gonna take extra time and look at all the pieces and make sure everything's intact, everything looks good. But the funny thing is, as soon as I got that roof deck done, I got an email, I subscribed to recpro.com i get an email saying hey look at we've got a new series of ladders that are designed specifically for where is it and i really wish i could find that email anyway i checked them out and they're pretty much exactly what i was looking for i kid you not i was envisioning a ladder that could somehow hinge up against the trailer when you're not using it and i just wasn't seeing anything like that on the market but anyway i checked out the rec pro ladders and sure enough they hinge they hinge they have a nice black finish if you want that and it just looks great but as fate would have it i had already ordered this and i just can't spend more money on this trailer right now it's turned out to be a little bit more expensive than i budgeted for we're gonna stick with this i still think this is gonna be a great system i don't love the chrome look but this trailer has a lot of shiny bits on it it'll match it'll look great and it's gonna work it's gonna give you that access to the roof deck so with all that out of the way, this is a Stromberg Carlson ladder, 92 and a half inches from the top mounting point to the bottom mounting point. Oh yeah, they call these standoff arms. It'll hold the ladder five inches off the trailer. The width is about 11 inches wide. Each rung is about 12 inches apart from the next one. The top rail is about seven inches off the the surface you're mounting it on. And it does say 92 and a half inches of, of recommended maximum length. It says you can add 15 inches more to that length. I'm not exactly sure how you would do that, but um, it also says you can shorten by trimming the ladder. So that's pretty cool. And somewhere on here, it will tell me, you would think it would tell me weight limit. Mm, let's go to the Amazon questions. Have a question? Yes, I do. Weight limit. What's the weight limit, somebody asked? 250 pounds. Oh yeah, it does say 250 pounds, but I've seen some of the reviews where people say, probably not realistically that high. This is kind of a thinner gauge aluminum. I could see it bending. So we'll just have to try it out and go from there. So with all that out of the way, let's unbox this bad boy. Oh boy. You know, Am I the only one that thinks styrofoam like this just needs to go away? There's better options out there. Okay, okay. It's 
Got all the plastic parts. Nothing scratched or dented. It appears straight. That piece looks good. Oh my gosh, come on. All right, so this should be the bottom. Yeah, so it's a pretty simple construction. You have your aluminum tube. They give it a bend. Then you have these rungs, and they have what looks like a... First, I thought this was a set screw, but thinking maybe it's a pin. But they all seem solid. Looks pretty straight again. Thank you for your purchase. Please read all directions thoroughly. Blah, blah, blah. All right. So it's telling me I need a Phillips, a hacksaw, or tube cutter. I don't think I'm going to need that in my scenario. I think I need every bit of the height, but we'll see. A drill, 3 16 and quarter inch drill bit, masking tape or pencil adjustable wrench or pliers. So I'm curious where the standoff arms go. Looks like I've got four. So you'll take this screw off and then you'll be able to just set this here. And I think that's when I'll drill. So I'll be able to place these wherever I want, which is helpful, but I'm assuming there's a minimum or a maximum distance requirement. It says, <laughs> I love it when these companies say this, uh, basically put them where your pre-existing ones were assuming that this isn't a new build super helpful they do come with an optional hinge if you have a contoured wall that you're mounting it on in my case i'm not going to need that i was kind of wondering if i could mount this at an angle then i could mount this in there and then i think there's another plate here yeah then i could go to my studs the problem is they only give me two of those and I've searched for these separately and they're kind of expensive. So instead I'm going to have to, I'll go over this in a little bit, but I'm going to add some extra bracing across where these standoffs are going to be so that I can drill into something solid. So now we can. This just looks like it goes so much further than it needs to. Kind of taking up some of the real estate for the roof deck but it's going to be five inches yeah it gives you about about a foot getting on and off that roof deck you do want one of these i think because my ladder is going up to the roof deck right now it's easy enough to get on the roof deck but then when you want to come back down having this handrail section at the top so that you can hold on to it and turn around i think will be very nice good girl suki oh boy okay so I think it's time. So my mic conveniently died at this point and I didn't know it. <laughs> so I'm gonna do my best to try and figure out what I was talking about. So I think what I'm saying here is the ladder that I have leaning up against the trailer is kind of about where I'm proposing to put the new ladder. I really didn't have a lot of options. On this side, I had to stay behind the fender and I had to stay between the crossbars. On the other side, I had the exit window and I really can't put it anywhere in front of that. So this is pretty much my only option. Now, I had already skimmed over the instructions at this point, and almost immediately I was having disagreements with them. <laughs> I noticed that the two rung sections could be slid together. One end of the top rung section had a tapered end. It was the only section that had a tapered end. It just seemed like the easiest, actually strongest way to join the two sections of tubing. The distance between the rungs in the middle, it's a little off, but it's close. I could cut down the non-tapered end pretty easy, but this isn't what the instructions would have you do. The instructions would have you flip the tapered end so it's up top, allowing you to slide on the handrails. That means you need to join the two rung sections with the included swivels, even if you're mounting on a flat surface. Now look at this. There's over a two foot gap between the rungs in the middle. What are they thinking with this design? I get that this is a universal system, which almost guarantees some amount of modification. No, it's not that difficult to cut aluminum tubing, but my point is if every application is joining the two rung sections the same way, they should be pre-cut from the factory to provide even spacing between all rungs, but this is just poor design which results in unnecessary modification, waste, and misleading product dimensions. Maybe I'm missing something, maybe not. Anyway, it's time to watch Sean work out the best way to piece this thing together for himself. Ooh, I just had an idea. So I could slide those two pieces together, and then I could put the hinge in between here. Ah, I like that better. Don't ask me why. That's quite the distance. But let's mock this up again. Tape, 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 tape. 
sticky side down. Ah, come on, man. So then I can put this down here and cut that pipe however short I want it. Ooh. That look like six inches off the top of the deck? A little more, maybe? Eight? You think? Okay. <laughs> this is silly. Yeah, yeah. So it's on there. Oh, man. That was pretty, pretty close, I'd say. The next question is, is that top rung too far? You know, the only way I'm going to know for sure is if I somehow leave this here. I think it'll stay. <laughs> I'm laughing too because sometimes when I have a problem and I'm like kind of talking it out with my wife how to fix something, usually I'm kind of just talking to myself. I'm like, ah, I wonder how I can fix this. And she'll be like, well, could you try taping it? And I always laugh. I'm like, tape is never the answer. <laughs> Uh, and here I am. This isn't perfectly lining up, but it'll, I think, get me close. So one rung up here, this is actually where you want to be. It really is. I can raise that up. It can go higher than that. I think we're there. I think I just, I think I just broke the case. So I was thinking of going in here just because I thought that looked like a nice spot, you know, the frames behind it, but there's still framing up to here. That's a height increase of, we'll, we'll say three inches. So that gets you pretty close. I think I could live with that. Okay, so that's like perfection right there. I'm gonna cut this, I'm gonna connect them. I just want this first section to be together, have that marked out where it's gonna go on the wall. And then I can know where I'm going to have to cut it up there. Okay. okay. Let's take this over to the saw. Safety is number one priority. So I think the next step should be figuring out where that's going to be mounted and actually maybe mount it. So I think I'm going to do that. Just have to be careful now with the paint. Always careful with the paint. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is mount a couple of the standoff arms. So this ends up against the trailer like so. This ends up against the ladder, the vertical tube. So what that means is you have to drill a hole through the tube where you want this to be and then use this screw that's holding this plastic bushing. And that's the screw you're going to use to actually secure it to the ladder. The picture, they show it between the second and third rung. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to measure, make sure you have it the right side up. Put it smack dab in the middle because that's kind of what their picture showed. Now at this point, you kind of have to decide, I guess, if you want these vertically or horizontally. I don't recall if the directions show that. Okay, so there's some conflicting pictures there. One shows them sideways, one shows them vertically. I'm gonna pre-drill the holes for that. And of course, now that I think about it, that's a different drill bit. What did I get here? This is a 1 8 take out one of their screws. That looks perfect to me, but let's see what they wanted me to use. Wait, what? So they don't really say, because why would they? Because they're assuming that you already have holes. Aye, aye, aye. I'm going to use this eighth inch bit. I'm just going to do one hole on each bracket. I'm going to go and make sure I didn't miss the beam. No, that's perfect. I can see it. What am I hearing? Oh boy, look at that. Would you look at that? We have this tour of tractors that comes through. 
sounded, it sounded like a locomotive going by these things. Some year I should try to get my old rusty Ford and join them. Is that it? Anyway, that, that's pretty cool. I forget about that every year until they start rolling by. So yeah, I pre-drilled that hole. And I'm not snugging everything down because I'm gonna put a little silicone behind this, but, but it's kind of one of those things where you gotta get everything lined up and test fit it. So this next part gets tricky because I need to put bracing on the inside behind this wall. Cause right now this is just gonna go in the sheet metal and it's not gonna be strong enough. Sadly, there's not a stud behind either of those brackets. It would have been nice to land in one of them, but the way I'm doing it is I'm gonna put in some two by fours to bridge that and I'm gonna glue them to the sheet metal. But when I put my wall panels up, I'm gonna screw into that support piece as well as the stud. So that way this whole brace piece that's going across is gonna be sandwiched in there and it's gonna all be tied into the wall. But a lot of the strength is coming from the bottom bracket that's going into the framing and then the top is also going into the deck. So if I put this here, okay. Now I can kind of see where my marks are. We're gonna do that right there. There, looking nice. Once I have it kind of secured out here, then I think I can go inside and do that bracing. And once that bracing is in place, then I can take off these brackets one by one and put some sealant behind them just for some added peace of mind that it won't leak into the trailer. Does the instructions say to do that? It says nothing about using sealant, which is mind boggling. I know that once you tighten everything down, it will really limit how much water gets through but it's not 100%. I mean, there's a gap around there. It's not a perfectly tight seal. But yeah, see now that top rung is very close. Let's try that. Yeah, that's like spot on now. Let's see what that feels like. It's gonna be right here. Oh, that's beautiful. That's perfect. Plus you're gonna have these guys. So you can see how this is, this is a good six inches off. These are not square like I thought it would be. So first I'm gonna attach these feet real quick, just loosely. Come on, come on. I guess these feet do swivel. That makes more sense. You guys know what you're doing, sort of. I don't. So, I like that. Probably would be stronger too. The shorter I can make it, the better. I kind of also like the idea of going wider. I think I will go out and out. You wanna give your feet enough room to pivot when you're turning around. I mean, I like the idea of just, I mean, the easy thing would just to be to, I do this all the time. I just go back and forth and back and forth. Pick one, Sean, just pick one. Doesn't matter. Okay, so I got my mark on one. Love it. I'm gonna do the standoff up here, then I can kind of figure out the top. I just wanna make sure that I do this in the right order so that it ends up straight. That's looking good. It's looking good, bro. Just to refresh my memory again, between the first and second rungs at the top, I believe. Dude, sweet. Tubular. What's the magic number? 12 and three quarters. It's kind of like the moment of truth here. Nope, still need that. Dude, I love it. Okay, so this got a little tricky on me. I have my four pieces cut out. They're gonna go in these spots. I want it so that when I put the wall panel on, and it's just gonna be flush. The tricky thing is I'm adding plywood to all of the studs to make the walls a little thicker. I kind of forgot to account for that when I was ripping down my two by fours, but it actually ends up working because the two by fours wouldn't have been deep enough on their own. 
So I've made the boards as deep as the studs. So when I add the plywood to the studs, I'll also add it to my cross braces. That way we are perfectly flush all the way across and we won't have that wall paneling bowing in or bowing out. I'm going to glue this board up here and hopefully then put a screw through the bracket from the other side and also glue behind that bracket. Then I should be able to take these screws out and do the same thing over here. Here we go. You know what? I think as long as I do that on the inside, I don't think I should have to seal behind those brackets because once I screw that bracket to the trailer, it's going to squish that sealant around there. It's not going to let anything in. So I'm happy with that. I think it's a time for the third hand again. I can just hear my dad laughing right now because I never thought I'd use this. And here we go again. <laughs> okay. that I didn't want to get it too tight because with the window on the other side I didn't want to blow out the walls at least it didn't kill me thanks for nothing dad no, I'm just kidding <laughs> user error maybe okay let's try it again this one should be easier because I've got a stud one thing I'll say about this is it is really nice but it's a little heavy and it's a little clunky to use sometimes, but still need to get used to it, I guess. Okay. Okay, so you can see sealant actually squishes out. So I'm pre-drilling them because I'm trying to avoid splitting the wood again. I just think it makes for a stronger connection. All right, now I feel confident that it's not going to move on me and I'll pre-drill the rest. See, one thing I don't like that I'm seeing here, this tube is pushing in the middle. You can see it's pushing the metal out. Don't love that. There's a metal frame behind that so it can't hurt anything and it doesn't appear to really be doing that anywhere else. So I have to do two more bolts there, I believe. Okay. Okay. That's good. All right. Yeah. That feels pretty awesome. So, did I, did I, did I? Oh, I did, I'm so good. Sometimes, sometimes. Oh, wouldn't you know, they didn't make this long enough to get a screw past it. So. <laughs> Stop. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much more solid you're gonna get with such thin aluminum. Maybe the Rec Pro, but who knows? Well, it was bound to happen. There we go. Okay. All right, now sadly, I don't get to try it, but my thought about making it wider was that you could be right here, you have a little bit more room to turn around, and then you can grab, and then you can find that first step. I think that's nice. All right, so 
I think this is going to be nice. I think it's at a great height. I'm really excited to try it out, but I don't want to try it out until I have that wall paneling up and everything is holding all this together. I think it might be strong enough, but I, don't, I just don't want to chance it because I have a feeling it could kind of crinkle the, the sheet metal because there's really nothing else holding it in there right now. But yeah, I dig it. But you'll have to keep an eye out for a future episode where I actually get to put this thing to use. After this episode, I am going to be... I'll be wrapping up the exterior projects. Just a few more things to take care of before I replace the interior wall panels. It should be a shorter episode, nothing too crazy. And then the next episode, I'll be insulating with sheep's wool and finally replacing the wall panels. Yeah, beyond that, I'm not sure yet. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.